Now let's talk about lobsters. If you know Jordan Peterson, you would have heard him talk about lobsters a few times. So why would we need to talk about this for those unaware? Well, lobsters have quite a few uh, similarities to humans that most people don't realize. But one of the most critical things lobsters need for their survival is shelter. And this is mainly because as lobsters grow, they molt and they shed their shells, which leads, which leads them vulnerable. So they bury themselves under a rock and they find a home for themselves. Except often there's only a small number of shelters available in a specific territory. So if there's more lobsters and there are shelters, there's going to be conflict. This is where a dominance hierarchy is demonstrated. Often one lobster will actually fight another lobster in order to assert dominance and get their shelter. It actually begins to like dance around like a boxer raising its claws up in the air, moving forward and back side to side, mirroring its opponent, waving its claws back and forth. And they have, also have these, these jets under their eyes where they uh, direct streams of liquid at their opponent. And the, the liquid contains chemicals that tell the other lobster about their size, their sex, their health, their mood. Sometimes a lobster will automatically just back down based on that. Now more than half the time, lobsters don't actually fight. They resolve their conflict by just asserting dominance without physically touching each other with more expressions of dominance but there's always going to be a loser and there's always going to be a winner now the neurochemistry of a lobster actually changes depending on a win or a loss but if a dominant lobster is badly defeated its brain basically dissolves it grows a new subordinate brain one more appropriate to its new lowly position its original brain just isn't sophisticated to manage the transformation from king to bottom dog without virtually complete disillusion and regrowth. Anyone who has experienced a painful transformation after a serious defeat in romance or career may feel some sense of kingship with the once successful crustacean. So this is where lobster and human being similarities begin. When we win, we have certain endocrine responses in our body. Now the most, a lot of animals do, we know this but serotonin being one that's very similar. Uh, lobsters have something called uh, octopamine, which most likely could be translated to a human being's dopamine response, right? The neurochemistry of defeat and victory. Uh, a lobster with high levels of serotonin and low levels of octopamine is cocky strutting, sort of shellfish, much less likely to back down when challenged. This is because serotonin helps regulate postural flexion. A flex lobster extends its appendages so that it can look tall and dangerous. Now. Let's make make it clear. Lobsters, a flexed lobster is good. A flexed human is bad, right? If you're in spinal flexion, your shoulders are rounded in, your head is down. This is more likely, this is the characteristics of someone who may be depressed, sad, moody. What serotonin and dopamine does for us is it extends us. It does spinal extension, so it opens up our posture. Lobsters obviously have uh, a different skeletal system, clearly, so they're gonna go in different joint actions. If we reverse the neurochemical configuration and we have a high ratio, so a lot of octopamine and low serotonin, then we produce a defeated looking, scrunched up, inhibited, drooping, depressed lobster, and Jordan uh, humorously puts, very likely to hang around street corners and to vanish at the first hint of trouble. Well, obviously lobsters don't have street corners, but it is an example of what humans do when they get in that state. Now, the, uh, lobsters have a, what's called a tail flick reflex, which serves to propel the lobster rapidly backwards when it needs to escape. Now, we have our sympathetic and sympathetic nervous system uh, that triggers fight, flight, or freeze in a human being. Now, often people flee from uh, certain stressful events and to defend themselves, right? Now, this is very important. Less provocation is necessary to trigger that reflex in a defeated lobster if their octopamine is high and their serotonin is low. And you can see the echo of that in the heightened startle reflex characteristics of the soldier or the battered child with post-traumatic stress disorder. For someone who has ingrained childhood trauma, for someone who has phobias, uh, for someone who's some type of uh, trauma and or low serotonin, poorly functioning endocrine system that results in them being depressed or anxious, their willingness to react and be triggered by stressful uh, situations and conflict 
is much higher. They're at much higher propensity. All the girls. Now, the female lobsters who also fight hard for territory during explicitly maternal stages of their, of their existence identify the top guy quickly and become irresistibly attracted to him. Well, how similar is that to uh, the human experience? We can obviously see the similarities between a dominant lobster, a dominant male, a powerful lobster, a powerful male, and their potential to attract mates. Instead of undertaking the difficult task of identifying the best man, the females outsource the problem to their machine-like calculations of the dominant hierarchy. And this is detecting, basically, who is the most dominant lobster who's winning the most battles. It needs to be pointed out that sheer physical power is an unstable basis on which to found lasting dominance and power. This is clear. We're not lobsters. We can't operate as simply as they can. It's purely about dominance, shelter, survival, mating for them. A primatologist, Franz de Waal, found that when he was studying chimp troops, males were, who were more successful in the long term had to buttress their physical prowess with more sophisticated attributes. In consequence, the males who stay on top longer are those who form reciprocal coalitions with their lower status compatriots and who pay careful attention to the troops' females and their infants. The political ploy of baby kissing is literally millions of years old and ingrained in our evolution. It's very simple just to deploy dominance. It's quite lazy to as well. We see this we see ego and dominance drive a lot of young men and women, men and women of all ages throughout our society, and it's off-putting. And the intuitive of us can detect it quite quickly. It may be superficially attractive and fleeting and um, exciting briefly, but over the long term, it's ugly. It's not comforting. Now, this is a metaphor for life. The dominant male, with his upright and confident posture, not only gets the prime real estate and easy access to the best hunting grounds, he also gets all the girls. The part of our brain that keeps track of our position in the dominance hierarchy is exceptionally ancient and fundamental. It is the master control system modulating our perceptions, values, emotions, thoughts, and actions. It powerfully affects every aspect of our being with a capital B, conscious and unconscious alike. This is why when we are defeated, we act very much like lobsters who have lost a fight. This is why this is important, because we we are like lobsters in many ways. And when a human is defeated, we often exhibit the similar characteristics to a lobster. And we win, similar thing. And if things do not improve, we become chronically depressed. Under such conditions, we can't easily put up the kind of fight that life demands, and we become easy targets for harder shelled bullies. And it is not only the behavioral and experimental similarities that are striking, much of the basic neurochemistry is the same. Low ranking lobsters produce comparatively low levels of serotonin. This is also true of low ranking human beings. Low serotonin means decreased confidence, means closed in body language, means you're not gonna stand up straight with your, with your shoulders back. Low serotonin means less happiness, more pain, more anxiety, more illness, shorter lifespan. High spots in the dominance hierarchy and high serotonin levels are characterized by the opposite. The importance of this hierarchy cannot be overstated. It is an example of life. The ancient part of your brain specialized for assessing dominance watches how you are treated by other people. On that evidence, it renders a determination of your value and assigns you a status. If you are judged by your peers as of little worth, the counter restricts serotonin availability. That makes you much more physically and psychologically reactive to any circumstance or event that might produce emotion, particularly if it is negative. But you need that reactivity. Emergencies are common at the bottom and you must be ready to survive. But this is when our brain can, I think the brain can override the judgment made by peers. It really depends on what state you're in. I think if you're already in that low dominant state, low serotonin state, well, you're much more easily susceptible to being affected by others' judgments. But on the other hand, a high serotonin, high dominance individual is much less likely to be susceptible to other people's judgments. When operating at the bottom, which many are and trying to get out of, our ancient brain assumes that even the smallest unexpected impediment might produce an uncontrollable chain of negative events. It's like a uh, positive feedback loop. On the other hand, if you're a high status, high dominance, high serotonin, our pre-reptilian mechanics 
assume that your niche is secure, productive, safe, and that you will be well buttressed with your social support. It thinks the chance of something will damage you is low and can be safely discounted. Change might be opportunity instead of disaster. The serotonin flows plentifully. This renders you confident and calm, standing tall and straight, and much less on constant alert because your position is secure and the future is likely to be good for you. It's worthwhile to think in the long term and plan for a better tomorrow. There's countless benefits to being high dominance, high status, high serotonin. 